Hi, this is Shrink Siddharth once again. Welcome back to the next video of this course of Java Fundamentals and Basics. In the previous few videos, we were exploring the iterators in Java, such as the for loop, while loop and do while loop. And now, let us proceed and check out what is a break statement in Java and how do we use it. So first of all, what is a break statement and what is its purpose? It is basically used to break a particular loop or break the switch case statement. Now, if you have followed my previous video of switch case statement, then you must be knowing that how we used the break statement in case of switch case example. So let me cite the example of the switch case statement. So here on the right hand side, I have written the switch case statement with integer my var equal to one. So let us use the switch case and pass my var as a parameter. And here as a first case, let us use one as a value. And if it is one, simply print one in the output console. And then in the case two, simply print two in the output console. And then simply terminate the switch case statement. So when this code is executed, what happens is that in the output, we get one and two both as the output. But as per our expectation, we should only get one as the output because my var is equal to one. So in case one, it should only print one. But what happens exactly is that when this condition becomes true, so we get one as the output. But since we don't have a break statement here, so what happens is that case two and case three, if it is present, all the conditions are executed followed by this case one. So we get one and two as the output. Now same thing happens in case of loops as well. Suppose let us take an example. We have to print all the values till two. So here suppose this is our loop int i equal to zero, i smaller than five, i plus plus. And here I am simply printing the value of the counter i. So in the output, we get output like this zero, one, two, three and four. That is i smaller than five, zero to four. But our question is that how do we print values only till two without decreasing this upper limit of five? So in this case also break statement plays a key role. So here is what the break statement comes into picture. So let us take the example of the switch case statement and the for loop using the break statement. So first let us come to the switch case statement. Here, suppose if I put the break statement here and again, here again, the break statement. So in the output, if this time we execute this block of code in the output, we get only one as the output. And this time two is not printed just because when this line of code is executed, it simply breaks out of the switch case statement and none of the case present after this case will be executed. And same thing here as well inside the for loop. What we can do, our program is to print the values till only two. So here after printing two as a value, what I will do, I will simply write a if condition. If the counter variable i is equal to equal to two, then simply break out of the loop. So in the output, we will get zero, one and two as the output. We won't get three and four as the output. So this is how we use break statements in case of loops and switch case. And now you must be thinking is the break statement is only applicable for for loop. The answer is no, you can use the break statement in case of while loop and also the do while loop. So let me show you the example inside the demo project in our IntelliJ IDE. So here I will mimic the same program that I showed you in the slide that is print all the values till two. So here is our for loop int i equal to zero semicolon i is smaller than five semicolon and increment the counter by one and then s out simply print the counter variable. And now if the value of i is equal to equal to two, then what we can do simply break out of the loop. And here let us now run our code. So here we get zero, one and two as the output. Now let us check out what will happen if I comment it. And now let us run our code. So here we go zero to four we are getting as the output. So this is the beauty of using the break statement in case of our loops. 
and now this break statement can be used in case of while loop and do while loop. So take it as an assignment. Just try it out in case of while loop and do while loop. How to write the same program in case of while loop. And now let us proceed a step ahead and let us check out the nested for loop in Java. So here what I will do is I will simply modify my code. So here I have simply written some code that is I have a for loop and inside this for loop I am having another for loop. So this kind of for loop is actually known as the nested for loop. Now in our previous video we already talked about the nested if conditional statements. So here we have the nested for loop. A for loop inside the outer for loop, right? So here I am having the counter variable of i equal to 1 till i smaller than equal to 3 and then inside the inner loop we have int j equal to 1 and j is smaller than equal to 3 and we are simply printing out the value of i and j in each of the iteration. Now remember the outer loop has its own iteration and the inner loop has its own iteration. So let's check out the output. So here we go. This is the output that we have here. The outer loop i equal to 1, inner loop j equal to 1, outer loop i equal to 1 and inner loop j equal to 2. So 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3 and so on till 3 and 3. So remember this left hand side 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2 and triple 3 are actually the output of the int variable i and on the right hand side for each of the value of i we have three values of j 1 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 and so on it is being repeated and now if i ask you you have to print values till 2 2 so in that case what you will do so here what i will do is that just inside the inner for loop just below after printing 2 and 2 as a value let us check if i is equal to equal to 2 and j equal to equal to 2 then simply break out of the loop. Now here I am not using the curly braces of curly brackets that is opening bracket and closing bracket. If you want you can use it or if you want you can remove it. Because if you have just one line after the if condition then you don't have to write this curly bracket. So here I will simply remove it just for the sake of simplicity. And now let us run our code. And now here what is happening is that what I was trying to do is to terminate the loop after 2 2. Now here we have just not printed 2 3 and rest of all the outputs are available here. So what is actually happening? So when we use the break statement so it simply breaks out from the loop within it is enclosed that is our inner for loop but we want to break out of this outer loop as well so that the values after 2 2 that is 3 1 3 2 and 3 3 won't be printed so for that what I will do is that I have to tell this break statement to break out of this outer loop not only from the inner loop so by default when we use the break statement it simply break out of the inner loop. So here what I will do is that just before this for loop I will simply use a label of let's say AA followed by colon followed by space and rest of the code let us indent it by one tab. So here the if condition just after the break statement I will simply give a space and simply use AA. Now this AA is actually the label for this for loop and this AA is actually user defined. So if you want you can also change it to outer that is outer for loop and replace this AA by this outer. So whenever we say this outer we mean this outer for loop. So we have simply defined the name for this outer for loop that is the outer. And now let us run our code. So here we get the desired output 1 1 1 2 1 3 2 1 and 2 2. So after 2 2 we have no output inside the console. And now what is the name of the for loop if we use a label for the for loop. So this kind of for loop is actually known as labeled for loop.
So a for loop with a label is known as labeled for loop. Always remember this. So this was all about the break statements in Java. Now the examples regarding the switch case statement I have not shown you right now in this video just because in the previous video of switch case statement I have covered that part in detail. So please go back to that video and check out the switch case statements in Java. So if you like what you saw please subscribe to this channel. This is Shrek from Smarthead signing off and do like the video and also comment if possible. Thank you.